Hey, Vess. Hey, Charlie. Sorry for being late, buddy. It's my birthday today and uh, got all kinds oh. of things to solve. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. How thank old you. are you getting? I'm 28 now. Oh, so you're my, like me, but hey, I'm not. You're, you're 28 too. That's what I mean. We're very young. We still have uh, the whole life ahead of us, right? Yeah, like uh, we're going to see. We have made around one third or one fourth of our life. Yeah. We, I'm going to be happy to live around to 100 years, but we're going to see. <laughs> yeah, it's like I think, well, I mean, our generation, I think yeah, it's the average going to be at least 90 years old. Um, in Canada, it's already 84, you know? Um, so a good 90 and I mean I could get started on that topic but me yeah, I, I think I, I don't I don't have any plans of dying actually I'm uh, I'm gonna be working on uh, you know lifespan startups and stuff like that and yeah I want to live forever I don't want to die <laughs> yet yeah, I, don't, well, I, I don't fear dying though that's that's the thing I need to mention though one of the biggest problem actually with uh, our I don't know. Our generation is uh, the overburn, the burnout. Yeah, definitely cortisol, basically. Well, especially um, as an entrepreneur, I'd say. I'm not sure like about normal people with normal jobs, um, but like I definitely there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are burning the the candles that by by both ends, you know, and they they can't manage um, cortisol. I mean it's it's nice to want to go hard, you know, and to to be competitive and to to work hard and to work long and everything. But you also need to to manage the long term. And I don't think that there's a lot of people, uh, you know, thinking long term. I think most, even like very successful entrepreneurs, they they just go very very hard, you know, and then they just fall and they do it all over again. <laughs> which is a good recipe, but it, it also it means that you won't live very long and you'll start having all kinds of problems. Yeah, sure. I totally agree with you, especially when it comes to the burning out and all the type of the things that are happening around me because there are a lot of people that are on full speed every day, the whole day. And it's actually from one side, it's quite a good, but from the other, I don't know. That is why why a lot of people are going and living in the small villages now. Yeah, remotely, and I mean, I I was one of that person a couple of uh, days ago. Uh, I was in uh, you know in the mountains, you know, like I I travel a lot and uh, I tend to go in the city, outside of city, and city outside of city. Just both both have like interesting stuff, you know, because going you know like in, in the the nature you, you don't have many things like good wi-fi or like food ordering services for example um so you, you need to alternate um hey i, I want to know how much how much time do you have ahead of you is, is it only 15 minutes that you have or do you have a bit more uh, i have a bit more we can start whenever you're ready so yeah. we can talk about uh I don't know. Yeah, we started talking, but we are not talking about the topic. So <laughs> uh, for sure, but I totally agree with you. Even, I don't know, I will be happy sometimes in the near future to have the possibility to create a dream lifestyle. What I mean for a dream lifestyle to be with my wife and only to have a uh, the four hour work week that is doing Tim Ferris. But we're gonna see. <laughs> but like there, there's a couple of things here. Well, I don't think the four hour work week was ever a thing, you know? It, it never really existed. I mean, if you mean the content of the book, um, which actually got me started, you know, as a digital nomad, yes, it has good content, but uh, I think the his title was very uh, hypey, even misleading in, in, some, in many ways. And I don't have anything against him first. He's one of my favorite human beings on the planet. But working four hours per week is, is not ideal. Um, 
I mean, you can't do shit like working four hours per week, to be honest. Uh, and the, the second thing I'm going to mention is that, you know, like when you love your work, it's it's not work, you know, like, I mean, today's my birthday. Am I going to take a, a break? Hell no. I mean, this is my my life purpose, you know, like this is how I'm going to change the world. Um, yeah, yeah, I totally so, agree with you. So, yeah, like I, 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 I don't want to work like 16 hours per day, obviously. I'm not at that phase anymore. I'm more in the, you know, um, I, I do, you know, those ultra events, those ultra marathons and the uh, Ironman, which is a very tough triathlon and you need to pace yourself, okay, when you do an Ironman, because if not, then you will just crash and burn. Uh, you, you will just like not finish the race or you will injure yourself and you need to go, like, you need to be strategical and, it's not that I slowed down. It's just that I have a, a different philosophy that's more built for the long term. And I, I think that not a lot of us entrepreneurs, well, high, high performance entrepreneur, think that way. Um, and I'll, I, I could also ask the question to myself, like, am I, am I kidding myself? You know, like, am I kidding myself? Do, do I really want to, to make it big and, and perform? I think the answer is yes, but have a different strategy which is more like pacing myself you know so that when i'm 70 years old like i'm i'll be i'll be 700 percent better than i am today you know and I'll, I'll believe it or not i'll be even healthier than i am today uh, that that's my goal um i want to ask you like what's what's your ideal lifestyle would it be to retire to you know like the, the villages like you say have have kids what would be no, your ideal lifestyle me. While well, having kids, but having time to travel. When I'm talking for uh, that thing that I mentioned to you, when it comes to the uh, four hour work week, I'm having a really different type of uh, opinion from Tim Ferriss. My, my thing actually is to be, to have enough, enough time to be not working only in that, on that business, but to have uh, the things so, so much working so I can have another things to do in my, my spare time, to have a time for uh, my family, for my kids, to have for my wife, to have a time to be working on another businesses that I want to develop, not only on the two, the two businesses that I have. The main idea is to create a work not only for me, but to, work, to create a work for the other people. And you have to do it, I don't know, working smart, not hard. For example, today I, I was talking with one new customer and uh, he mentioned that most of the things they're doing uh, by, our, by their hand and even five minutes that you are, you was late with 10 or five minutes, I scraped uh, with current pace, I scraped around uh, I don't know, around the whole fintech companies in Europe. But if you're not working smart, you're going to do it by hand for two or three months. I don't know how much. Yeah. And the, my idea is to create a balance where I have uh, uh, I have enough work, but my work is most of the managing and thinking on the side of the work mm -hmm. and providing work for other people. But... Uh, also those people to be thinkers so they are not going to be the people that uh, are working and doing the bot stuff but only the bot stuff are doing it from them and they are doing the other part of the work that is thinking i agree you know like robots will definitely help to free our time yet it depends what what you want also in life for example um, you know, Jeff Bezos, uh, which is one of my inspiration, and that's the level of, of success I, I seek to accomplish uh, business-wise. And I think, you know, Bezos, apart from the money side of things, he's the modern Santa Claus. Uh, I mean, he's the guy delivering gifts every Christmas, for example. Uh, I mean, he, he has Prime Videos, he has Alexa. He, he done a lot of good for humanity, in my opinion. 
uh, and that's who I want to be, you know, and he has this, this uh, phrase, it's to work hard, long and smart, you know, you need to go on those three dimensions to, to mag magne magnify and maximize your impact. And that's kind of, of where I want to be. But yes, indeed, like, I, I think it's also about equilibrium. You know, I am one of the believers that I think you can have it all. But obviously, we'll take time, you know, you can I'm have the, the, the family, you can have the business, you can have uh, all of that, just that it will take time and you need to be patient and you need to be strategical. Um, and I, I was curious, I, I saw you were also like in, in the blockchain and you obviously, well, for, for everyone that, that don't in, know who you are, you're, you're a, a Ves Georgiev, am I pronouncing it right? Yeah, that's Georgia, and you you have an SDR agency. You had a blockchain um, company as well. Can you tell us a bit more about your your businesses yeah, and, and where you want to go? It's uh, it's not a blockchain company. Actually, uh, several years ago, when I start, I had another business partner. It mm -hmm. was around three years ago, and we were thinking about creating a company that is uh, having um, how to say. It? To be, list, the right? head, to be the head of several companies that are doing development but could not find the customers. Okay. But in the end, we were we don't have enough background when it comes to development. And mm -hmm. that is why we start with the SDR agency. Mm -hmm. Year ago, before year ago, it wasn't so successful the first year of our SDR, our SDR agency. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had some difficulties. Uh, I need to separate my part with the whole, the, my first co-founder. After okay. that, uh, something happens with my team. And currently I have a team that is really working. There are people that are from 20, 25 years old to 55 years old mm -hmm. with, together with my new co-founder. And uh, there is the HDR agency, actually it's lead generation and business development agency that is passion for growth. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, it, maybe it was a March or um, February with uh, another co-founder, we start a passion for tech, which, which is outsourcing a company that is providing another people with uh, web developers, how we are doing it. We are finding the right freelancers and companies that could not find a job and we are giving them some jobs. That is the thing that actually it's uh, there. I'm the person that is doing more uh, lead generation sales and these kind of things, though I, everything that I know and automations because that is my, my holy grail that I was thinking about it the whole several years, but, and I have uh, uh, the, the other, my co-founder there is with uh, 17 years of uh, development background. So he's the person that is pushing more and is providing the results there. Why did you decide to start a, an SDR agency? Uh, well, my whole life, I even from, I don't know, I am, 28 from, I don't know, 16 years old, a lot of people were talking to me that I need, I can be successful in the sales, but I'm, no, I'm not that guy. And uh, when it comes to the sales, I had that opinion in my head that uh, sales is something bad. It's not good. You are the person that is uh, scaring the people, these kind of things. And I don't want to be a sales because even my, father and a mother, my parents have a small mini market in my hometown. And from there, I didn't like to be around the people to talk so much. But in the end, uh, when I was uh, a student, because I was studying for a lawyer, I start, uh, I became a part of one student organization. And there I was doing uh, on local level sales, marketing, engaging, sending people on their internship, these kind of things. And from there, I start to be more extrovert, not so intro introvert, start talking with people, having uh, very different types of talks. After that, I was working for a one uh, credit company. There I was uh, having a team of uh, several people, around five, I don't know how much, but I quit on my 
in my first or second year mm -hmm. and start studying business on the place where I was studying business. I had, uh, I have been there, the B2B sales of the organization. It was again, small organization, but we were providing companies with uh, training, soft skills trainings. Mm -hmm. And after I quit there, we start there, we tried to make one marketing agency, but it wasn't successful. After I quit, I had a small overburn. Uh, burnout actually and mm. I didn't do nothing for two months I create a upward profile and without applying two companies reach out to me for to be their lead generation person and from there I start, start working on the lead generation I know several stuff I didn't know and actually year and a half ago on around two years I decided to create uh, to start an agency that is for uh, lead generation okay. with a couple that I'm currently not working, but it's like uh, all that time I'm thinking about that overnight success is that it doesn't exist. <laughs> like everything they're putting on uh, the cinema and yeah, uh, like Wolf of Wall Street. That's, yeah, like uh, everything that uh, people are doing when you are searching for, uh, for example, Ty Lopez or mm -hmm. somebody else is totally bullshit. So Overnight success is, uh, I don't know, million falls and million and one stand-ups. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think Ty Lopez, just like everyone, there's you, you take and you leave some, right? So there's a lot to take uh, from Ty Lopez as advice, and obviously yeah. you need to con contextualize his advice to where you are, uh, because there's a lot of marketing and, and sales and, and what Ty does and you know, that, that can be uh, misinformation in many sense of the things. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, it's, you, you take some and you leave some, but um, the overnight success, you. the overnight success was built like 10 years ago and they daily work, you know, daily input and, and insights and testing, you know, like nowadays I view myself as, as a lab, you know, uh, I'm a lot into R and D and, and checking out stuff and, We'll talk a, a bit more about that later on in, in the interview, but I want to talk about the, the burnout because the burnout in sales yeah. is very frequent. Uh, sales is hard um, and sales is, al is also purpose driven. Uh, so can you, can you tell us a bit more details about that and some solutions that you have to prevent burnout? Why well, one of the things is that for, in my experience, it's a, uh, you're taking too much work. You're mm -hmm. not uh, putting a lot of rest. And you need to know that in order to build sustainable results, you need to learn. You need to know how to do those things and always to be prepared that maybe the results that you're expecting this month are going to be there in around three months and these kind of things. Yep. Because yep. Uh, when you are in the sales, a lot of people were pushing at you, especially when you're in the startup sales, and it's both if your company it's no matter it's a service company or it's uh, I don't know how to do it uh, to say it, but it's bootstrap it. Mm -hmm. And if it's product or service, most of the time your money are coming from your customers, and your customers are pushing you. You need to have money for your team. You need to have the results for your customers. And most of the time is the sales, especially if you're doing the agency stuff, it's providing you, your brain is uh, actually playing with you and it's pushing you in some other ways. So for burnout, I don't know, the things that we are talking with you, for sure, the mountains, for sure, meditation and having time to write, to read, to have a time for your family, for your loved one, for everybody that are around you and for yourself, for sure. And what, what are the telltale signs of a burnout? And what can we also define what a burnout is? Because I know as an entrepreneur, you know, I've faced tough times, but I mean, the, the fire has been, it's so strong. It's so tough to put out, you know, this fire that's been in me. And also I think it's from a, a DNA and then genetic perspective, you know, I've always been driven and driven and ambitious uh, that it, it's really tough to, to put out this fire. I, I mean, I've faced tough moments in which, you know, 
um, I, I can see and I can guess what burnout is, which is high amounts of stress and not wanting to open my computer, for example. I was like, shit, do I want to open this computer today and face all the, the bullshit again? Um, like that, this is what it looked to me. Can you, can you define uh, what a burnout is and also what are the telltale signs of one? Why well, the signs of everything that you said, but for me also was uh, constantly an anxiety. You're yeah. always thinking for the, and visualizing the negative part of the things, not yeah. the good part of the things. Mm -hmm. You are, uh, you are, how to say it, you are not satisfied with the things that, that you did yesterday. And you are thinking that tomorrow is not going to be a good fit. You yeah. are trying to satisfy everybody and working uh, Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday all the time mm. and for how we were talking in the beginning, you are working from 16 to uh, 12, from 12 to 16 hours. Mm. And one of the biggest problem is that when you're in the burnout phase, for you is easy to burn out also the other people because yeah. I had uh, this kind of uh, problem yeah. because you are always pushing, you are not satisfied. It is like uh, that thing that there are people that uh, were doing more, they're satisfied, but there are another people that they need to see that their result is giving some fruits. The everything yeah. that they're doing is giving some fruits. They're pushing, they are not only doing uh, for, for God's sake or something for like that. And in the end, uh, for sure, you need to have a spare time. Maybe, I don't know, to have a break around uh, once per week, on once per month, or having three days break on in three months. The main idea is that you need to have uh, a little bit time with that you are not around digital devices, movies, yeah. uh, negative people, and these yeah. kind of things. Maybe yeah. that was for me. I don't know what is... What was well, that's so good that, that's face. so good you know you're everything that you're telling uh, it's very insightful um did you see what, what were the telltale signs you know that this that this was going to explode did you see some physical um signs for example that you weren't sleeping that you had less energy what were the the signs that sure, like things yeah. weren't going well so for sure it's less energy you are not so productive. You are. You could not sleep. You became fatter. You are not. You are not uh, motivated to train. You are always thinking for like uh, you having nightmares. You don't have uh, good dreams, and, and most of the time you are here, but you are not here. Actually, you are either in the bad future or either in the bad past in your brain. Got it. There is the signs that I saw, but I don't and, know it was. Again. And what was the epiphany? Was it like, okay, yeah, today's enough. Like my life is not going the direction I want to. I'm just going to hit the pause button. Um, what was And was that hard to hit the, the pause button? Did you feel like you disappointed people? How, how was the, the epiphany of the like, burnout? Especially in the entrepreneurial world, you always gonna disappoint somebody and you need to learn that not all of the people that you have uh, working for or work with or having as a team members are going to be satisfied with you, with everything that you're doing. You know, some of them are going to like you, another, another one are not going to like you and in not with, I don't know, enough, but not only enough, they are not going to like you for sure. And that is something that you need to face if you are putting in the entrepreneur's uh, uh, shoes, if you're putting your entrepreneur's shoes. And the other thing that you're for sure you need to do is uh, like the having the epiphany that you're talking is different for some, same for everybody, because in some point you can, you're thinking that you're on the war point, but you can always go more than that, or you can go, uh, straight up in, what, in my opinion was uh, fucking shit I don't like the person that I'm becoming, becoming mm. who I want to be it's like uh, for the book that we were talking 
with you the last time, high yeah. performance habits. Yeah. So most of the time you need to know who you want to be. And in one case, you are going to pursue either the person that you want to be or the person that you don't want to be. The main idea is what is the story that you tell yourself and from where you are putting your thoughts, your energy and everything. Got it. Got it. There so is a point that enough is enough. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all about, you know, identity and, and values as well, which is and emotions in the end, you know, like, uh, which, which is also like interesting, you know, like the, the determined uh, nature of, of some of us human beings. You know, I, I referred earlier that like I was always ambitious, always like um, competitive. And um, th this is kind of who I am, you know, so I, you start with, with the package and then you, you, you try to improve it. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of curious, like after the, the story, so you decided to jump like with, with your two feet in the entrepreneurial world. Uh, can you give us a, a bit of insights for about passion for growth? How many clients do you have right now? Like how big do you want to be? Um, can, can you start telling us a bit more about uh, passion for growth? Actually, the last year, like the first six months of the year were tough because yeah. I took some decision and I didn't do, I didn't make a really right decision. Like, uh, I was some teammates based on my decision, on the things, how I talk and these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have like I joined force, forces with my co-founder that is now. And we are around five people. We're having uh, currently four to five clients. Uh, hopefully next year, we're going to become bigger, like to have those clients that we have for now and to have to be around uh, to have better processes for sure better results because i'm not always satisfied with the results that we have mm -hmm. and to have i don't know 15 to 12 to 20 customers but we're gonna see which is the directions that we're gonna take because we are good in the currently we weren't so good in a in making appointment setting but currently we are doing great stuff when it comes to appointment setting through email, through LinkedIn, or yeah. even we have one, one group that is calling from Bulgaria for cold calls in Bulgaria. Yeah. But when it comes to the how big we want to grow, for sure, we want sustainable growth because last year I was pushing to have, to be, have a faster growth that is not so good, but for me, I don't know, in one or two years to have sustainable water. I mean, around 20 customers that are with us from one or two years like that, to have a team that is fully understanding what we are doing to provide the everything that we promise to our customers mm -hmm. and to provide them with results to be professionals. Our team has to be satisfied and nobody to, uh, either me, my team, or somebody else to not be on the burnout mode. That yeah. is something that we are striving for. That's interesting, sustainable growth. Uh, that got me thinking. Uh, generally speaking, how, how do you do to keep your clients? Do you, for example, don't oversell them and you, you, you do what you say, basically? Any tips for us uh, agency owners to actually retain your clients? Uh, for sure, in the beginning of the year, I oversend them it, uh, and that give, that is uh, that cost me a lot. So currently I'm not overselling them. I'm trying to improve no one. My, our team is trying to improve our processes for sure, delivering what we are promised. And if we are not delivering what we are promised, we are giving them something that is uh, extra. For example, taking, the, taking care for their business development, like uh, saying them, hey, you need to a contract with a uh, contract for the partners that we are bringing you. 
your for you is going to be easier if you put the contracts you need the second steps in the, your funnel you're not position you're not positioning your company in a quitch for example call or 99 mm -hmm. firms we can uh because we did you for example we schedule for you one or two meetings that uh, we need to schedule for you five meetings per month, but we scheduled only three. We are going to create and build your crunch base profile and this kind okay. of things. Got it. So consulting, and end, it's not working with, yeah, and if it's not working with them, we are stop working because it's not giving the right uh, value because uh, most of the clients that we are, working with they're facing and putting like near yeah, we are lead generation agency but for some of them we are building partnership for some of them we are aiming for some project that are not so easy to to create it like uh we're talking for some of them lead generation but on a corporate level before that we are doing on a other type of level like startups level for some of them, it's good to have a partners. For some of them are not good. But for example, we have a company that, yeah, they don't close a lot of customers of the appointments that we bring them. But for, with a lot of, from those customers, they're creating a partnership, building a new products, having additional service to their service and then growing that, through that phase. So Got the it. main idea is, that we are trying to see what is not working and to improve it. Okay, okay. That, that's good. Um, what are your best working techniques that you can share with like other SDRs out there that are working super well and try to be precise? Uh, and for example, name some software, some precise software that you're using to actually generate some quality meetings. Well, for softwares, one of the things is that yeah, quality, quantity is bringing results for sure. What I mean is, when it comes to the um, when it comes to the email marketing, if you have enough people that are in your target audience mm -hmm. and are uh, having their best emails, you have a warm up email and everything is you are putting everything that you, your emails are not going in the spam. With this, if you have around thousand or thousand and five hundred clean emails that are good with uh, divide between two emails accounts you can put uh, you can schedule for sure but i'm talking for a b2b no i'm not talking for b2c but i'm talking for high ticket offers mm -hmm. you can schedule between 10 to ten, between five to ten meetings but with middle-sized businesses what i mean are from 11 to 1,000, one, yeah, 100 people, not 1,000, but with okay. 100 people, you need to have your target right and you need to combine several things. You need to combine LinkedIn, you need to combine uh, email outreach and never earn, underestimate the power of your network because all of the times that you are searching, mm -hmm. you can find people in your network even that are going to need this kind of service. Got it. When it comes to the techniques and softwares, uh, currently I'm satisfied something that I didn't use, but it's now giving uh, better results for us. Combination with, uh, from several softwares, I have used and I'm, start, I'm going to start again using it. Expand, it's a good software. Uh, I'm using Clamlist, it's a quite good software when it comes to the email marketing, we are currently creating a new process that is together with uh, Lamlist, uh, Snowbio, uh, FindAtlet, and Million Verifier. That is quite a good uh, software. And uh, yeah, and we are, we had a one really successful funnel with Skylit, actually. Okay, okay. yeah, I know Skylit. Um, Okay, so a couple of questions. So like in your sequence, the 11 to 100 employees, you're, you would be targeting CEOs, correct? Uh, uh, CEOs, CXOs, partners, VPs, basically. Okay, got it. And um, when you say warm-up email, what does that warm-up 
look like? And is the first contact email? And then the second is LinkedIn. And is there some calls inside that, that sequence? Uh, currently, we are not doing cold calls because, I don't know, there is no, like in our team currently, we are searching for a good cold caller, but not the, not all the people can do the cold calls. Even I saw it from my own experience with another people that some of the times cold calls are burning out your best people. Yeah. Or I don't, I don't want to put the people that don't want to call to make a cold calls. Yeah. Uh, warming up is actually uh, to have a really good email that is uh, recognizable from the email from the email service providers, for example, Google, Microsoft, and the others. Yeah. Uh, I even saw that there are people that are providing emails and are selling emails that are warm up and created around 10 years ago because it's giving a better delivery. And uh, for sure, there is a way to warm up automatically, but currently, I'm not sure that they are working on the best ways because with some of them I'm seeing a really good results, but, but with some of them I'm seeing a really bad results that even are costing to be recognized around spa, like spam with uh, when you are using the warm warm up feature. So I'm still testing that thing. Got but it. To be warm up is to be sure that uh, your delivery is good. And one of the things that uh, I warm after burning two or three domains is that you need to have maximum bounce rent around 5%. And uh, for sure you need to clean your email list. And, and like warm up, would it say like, hey Charles, would we start pitching on the first like email? Or is it like, uh, hey Charles, just uh, reaching out here, connected with you on LinkedIn? Is it like something broad like that or is it you, you you tell them like from the get-go what you're doing actually i had tested the boat the both ways mm -hmm. one of them is really how to say it it's long term and it's not giving you so much uh, if you are faster yeah there are a lot of people that if you want fast results there are a lot of people that are going to tell you that you're a spammer, that you don't need to pitch it, that you don't need, that you don't make uh, uh, your research on them. But if you need a better qualification and faster results, it's better to have bigger amount of emails and uh, it's combination with uh, hey and a little pitch just so they know what is your service. And not so big pitch, but for example, for sure the call to action is, needs to be let's jump on a meeting or a call to to see each other and to see how we can cover it. Got it. Last time, last conversation we had, we talked about line.ai, we talked about Jarvis.ai. Are you using any of those AI softwares and do you see a potential impact, uh, positive impact with those softwares in the near future? A uh, positive impact, yes. I didn't test uh, most of them. I'm still thinking to test one of them that we are talked about it, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't do it because one of the thing is that uh, um, when it comes to the testing, the email subject line and testing is good because those are generating your icebreakers. But I can tell a little bit more when I test some of them and see what is the, are the results better than the results that we are talking now. Mm -hmm. It's uh, again, it's how much power you want to put on doing your research and your human resources that you have. Because with the software, with a few clicks, you can make the research from LinkedIn, from Google, or from the other. Yeah, it's maybe it's not going to be good, like uh, for sure, it's not going to be so good like the person, but in order to have a really deep research, it needs to be done from you. And when somebody else is doing it for you, if you don't, do, if you didn't work with that people from one or two years and know how they are doing your, their, their research, maybe the results are going to be 
the same. Maybe uh, they are going to be better, but maybe they are going to be worse than the, doing it with uh, AI software. Yeah, yeah. Have you tried one v one outreach, like you yourself or some people internally, like checking like profiles one by one and writing highly personalized uh, emails or, or LinkedIn messages? And what were the results if you did? I didn't try it on. Honestly, uh, I like uh, to be more with how to say to have bigger list and to push it harder. Uh, because I'm not sure that actually, but without the personalization, uh, one of my partners have tried. He had around four people that uh, did it manually. He, they're sending LinkedIn invitation. They're sending the emails and everything, but they didn't personalize it. And the results were smaller than doing it by with automation because the people are not so consistent in tracking uh, when they need to send the follow-up, to whom, who opened the email and these kind of things. Got but it. again, I'm talking from a, another person perspective. I didn't do it by myself. Okay, okay. okay cool. Um, this this is kind of the end of the, the podcast. Did you have any final tips for SDRs hustling out there? Do you have any tips for them to make their life and their job better? Yeah, the things that we are doing, for sure, one of the things is find the right people, find a mentor, because currently even I'm, uh, even I'm having a mentor, like uh, not even, but uh, my mentors are having a mentor. That is why even my mentors are having a mentor. Find somebody that is around 10, 5, 10 or 3 years, ahead of you, he's going to help you. For sure, uh, jump, jump in one industry, learn the whole, everything for the industry, build a network because no matter where you are working as an SDR or having your own agency, if you have enough bigger network, it's going to help you and provide your results for you, for your clients and your companies. That's a good one. Very good one. Well, uh, it's been a pleasure, Vest. Thank you for your time. Uh, it, it has surely been a, a very insightful call, especially for the, the burnout thing, which is something that not all of us talk about. And uh, <laughs> ironically, most of us go through those uh, very tough periods, especially in sales. So thank you for sharing that. And we'll be in touch, buddy. Thank you very much. And happy birthday, Charlie. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You too. Bye.